John Taita? Maho had never heard that name before. アメリカのネット掲示板に現れた人物だよ。2036年からタイムマシンになってやってきた。自称未来人だ。俺はそれ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ。それ
so she decided she had no choice but to give them to him. He didn't tell her whether he was going to destroy them or not. Look you right up in your face again. When she arrived at their office in Waco City, Dr. Luskin was already there. He came over and gave her a big hug. <laughs> she turned out the office had been ransacked, but whoever had, who, whatever had happened had already been cleaned up. And really, was there anything here that would, would be worthy of being ransacked? I think, like, Maho had a desk here, but that was basically it. I guess in the Amadeus computer, but that's locked behind, like, key cards and shit. But also, this building is too, so... Who knows? Two days had passed since the office had been ransacked. Maho had spent both of them at Ferris's house, and only today she'd gotten in touch with Dr. Luskinen and gone to Waco City to get her things. They were both going back tomorrow, just as planned. That meant they were saying goodbye to this office. The two of them looked around at the empty office. It had been a busy two months. ハヤク大学に戻って研究に打ち込みたいですね。この2ヶ月資料をまとめてばかりだった気がするので。ああ。魔法は真面目だね。それとクリスが最後の時間を過ごしたこの国の空気を感じることができたのは良かったです。But she still hadn't figured out why Kirito had died. Actually, she had even more questions now. It bothered her to go home with so many questions left unanswered. Fully Rintaro had told her everything he knew. The thought suddenly occurred to Maho. Of course she meant Rintaro Okabe. If both Maho and Luskin were heading back to America, that meant his time as a tester was over. For some reason, the professor was taking a moment to think it over. She wondered what there was to think about. クリスはこれまでにないような反応をして見せているだろう。今後はカレだけでなく、もっと多くのテストを使っていきたいと思う。考えているところだし。セキュリティの面で不安があるのでは。アメリカと日本だと離れすぎていて、何かトラブルが起
Notaro had come to see them off, and he was very surprised when Dr. Luskin told him he could continue being a tester. And then half a year passed. That's a time jump. Alright, new chapter. Hell Stigma. Victor Condrea University's grounds were dead quiet. It was after 11 p.m. Some of the labs worked at night and into the morning, so the place wasn't completely abandoned. But compared to daytime, it was quiet. The lights in the halls were off, and it was a little scary walking down them alone. Maho lived in the researcher's apartments next to the lab. She'd been thinking about so many t things that night, her head felt like it was going to explode. Then she looked out the window and realized that the lights were still on in the brain science lab. Dr. Leskin must have been working late. She decided to put some coffee in the thermos and take it to him. Ever since she'd come back from Japan in January, she spent all her free time on it. Even she had to admit she was getting obsessed. Of course, since this wasn't something that she could research in public, and since she couldn't let it interfere with her real job, she had to do all of it in her own room at night. As a result, she was staying up late battling with physics textbooks, an unfamiliar subject for her. Exhaustion and lack of sleep were starting to get to her. The whole idea of a time machine was stupid. She still thought so, but she was surprised at how desperate she was getting. What Okabe had said to her in Japan still stuck with her. Rotaro could have been lying, or wrong, or simply delusional, but part of her wanted to believe it was real. Of course, from what she had seen of Dr. Nakabachi's paper, she didn't want to believe Kirisu was involved. It was just that bad. But... If she could have written it off as a slim possibility, everything would have been so much easier. But it was just like her, she thought, to be unable to do that. I want to find what Kiroso found. That that desire was what drove her to action. But the more research she did, the harder it seemed. It was so hard she was starting to lose faith in what she wanted to believe. Her usual complex started weighing down on her. Chris, I... Kirisu was her dear friend, but at the same time, she was starting to feel jealous, frustrated, and hateful. And when all those feelings started going around in her mind, there was no way she could focus on work. It was time to chat with Dr. Luskin for a little, and then go to sleep. She headed over to the lab. Hmm? Yeah, Dr. Leston didn't seem surprised at her sudden visit, but he stood up from his chair and welcomed her. You darn kids! Dr. Luskin then laughed innocently like a child at her cutting remark. The cup on Dr. Luskin's desk was empty. She poured him some coffee from the thermos. It wasn't the sticky sweet cafe au lait that she liked. She'd made a straight black to match the professor's taste. The room was filled with steam and a pleasant smell. Mahoga coffee or gochisoshi tekrerutoa. 